Gonna be talking today about Bank of America. Uh, does everybody here know about mortgage-backed securities? Yes. yes. Yeah. Explain. No. Explain. All right. So basically, what this scam is about, I've been covering this for years. I've been trying to explain this to audiences, and the easiest way I can explain this is that it was banks selling oregano as weed. <laughs> In the old days, when you got a mortgage. Mortgages were a boring business. You went to your local bank or your local credit union, you asked for a mortgage, they gave it to you, and then they held that loan. So if you were an unemployed meth addict who was falling apart in that interview, they were not gonna give you that loan. So ergo, we did not give out risky mortgages in the old days. So the banks had to find a way to give mortgages to people, to sell mortgages on a secondary market uh, in a way that disguised the poor quality of the borrowers. And how did they do this? They came up with this new technique called securitization and the collateralized debt obligation. Has everyone here heard of a CDO or a CMO? All a CDO is, or a CMO, is just a big bag for putting mortgage payments in. And how did this work? Let's say I'm Bank of America, or more to the point, countrywide, a big mortgage lender. I got a billion dollars. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna give everybody in this audience, I'm gonna give you all a mortgage. All right? Woo. Yeah. Hey. All right, is everybody happy? <laughs> you have jobs, you don't have jobs, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna give everybody here a mortgage. And at the end of the month, I'm gonna take this bag and I'm gonna go around to everybody. I'm gonna say, put your mortgage payment in at the end of the month. So please, it's the end of the month. Everybody throw your money in, all right? <laughs> now what am I gonna do? So I got this bag, and I'm Bank of America, and I'm gonna go to all these investors, like pension funds, unions, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, any big institutional investor. And what I'm gonna say is, and I'm gonna bring with me a, a couple of math geeks from uh, Moody's and Standard & Poor's, the ratings <laughs> agencies, all right? So forget about the fact that everybody in this audience, maybe they don't have jobs, maybe they just got fired, maybe they're not even citizens, uh, maybe they have criminal records, maybe they have terrible credit scores. Don't worry about that because according to our calculations, at least this much of the bag is gonna be filled with money every month. We're gonna sell you this portion of the bag and we're gonna call that a AAA rated security, all right? That means that if you invest in this portion of the bag, it's as safe as an, invest, an investment as buying a U.S. Treasury bill or investing in the debt of a sovereign country like Luxembourg or the United Kingdom. Really? Really. really <laughs> that's what they said. So what happened? All these state pension uh, funds and, and union retirement funds and foreign retirement funds and mutual funds all around the world, they all bought this shit. They got bagged. They got bagged, exactly. <laughs> In the year 2006, again, there were 9,000 of these bags, these, these mortgage-backed pools that were given a AAA rating. Anyone want to guess how many U.S. corporations last year had a AAA rating? Does anyone know? Zero. 1,200? Four. 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 Four corporations in the United States last year got a AAA, uh, got a AAA rating. That's AIG? Like, no, not AIG, no. no. <laughs> So basically, even, even companies like Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, which has $20 billion in capital, Warren Buffett is not AAA rated, but an unemployed janitor in Los Angeles who has a mortgage is AAA rated. That was the basic scam of the financial wow. crisis. That's what these guys did. They went around and they turned a bunch of oregano into high-grade weed and they sold it all around the world. Jeez, what do we do, Matt? What do we do? All the, if this was any other, any other kind of industry, if this was a car company, if this were a health insurance company, all these guys would be in jail. They would be doing time for this kind of fraud. So Bank of America is a totally appropriate target for Occupy Wall Street. It's a company that's barely hanging on, but it, it, the only reason it's staying in business is because the market thinks that the government is gonna rescue it if it goes under. We have to make sure that enough pressure is put in the government so that nobody ever rescues companies like this again, that they can't engage in this kind of fraud and get away with it.